Happy Merry Holidays, everybody. I hope you've all been having a fantastic holiday season so far. Speaking of Christmas, there is no better time to buy a loved one or even yourself some video games. But sometimes it's really hard to figure out exactly what you should buy, even when it's for yourself, but especially when you're buying for other people. So every year I make one of these videos, a holiday buying guide to help you out for Christmas or just generally around this gift giving time of year. So throughout this video I am featuring 150 games. I've selected these games specifically because I feel like they're the ones you will most likely see when you're out and about or when you're shopping online or these are just the games games people generally talk about. So here is how I've broken it all down. By price to begin with, we have $50 to $60 big budget games, the midway $30 to $40 games, and then the cheapy $10 to $20 games. In each three of those brackets, I broke them down again into must buy essential games. These are the ones to buy with your money, okay? <laughs> and then I have a maybe section. Now the reason those games are in a maybe section is because it kind of depends on the person you're buying it for. And then the third section is of course the avoid and you just you do not buy that game you stay away from that game all right obviously with so many games and so little time i won't have time to explain why i put every game where i put it but i'm gonna do my best i'll leave links down below to not only all my reviews of every game on this list but where you can buy the game too i hope this video helps you or your loved ones or whoever it is out in some way if it does make sure you hit that like button and it would also help if you share the video around especially if you know there is someone buying you presents this holiday season you can send them the video maybe even timestamp it to the game that you want as a little bit of a wink wink nudge nudge let's do this starting with the 50 to 60 dollar big budget expensive games in the must buy you need to have these category every time i do a video like this it always starts off the same way the big three mario odyssey zelda breath of the wild and smash brothers ultimate Depending on the Nintendo fan you're buying games for this Christmas, it's a pretty solid bet they're gonna want one, if not all three of these games. Doesn't matter which one you get, as long as there's one, and I'm excited to announce I'm adding a fourth to this too. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Okay, so once you have at least one of those figured out, these are the rest of the must-buys in the $60 price range. Luigi's Mansion, Mario Kart 8, Super Mario Maker 2, Astral Chain, Dragon Quest Builders 2, Xenoblade 2, and Dragon Quest 11 S. All of those games, in my opinion, are top-tier games. You cannot go wrong, no matter who you're buying them for. I would easily throw Splatoon 2 into that list as well, but it is online only, which is something you have to look out for. You need to pay about three dollars a month or 20 bucks a year to get nintendo's online so it is an extra fee that goes into it it's something to look out for then there's three more in this category too i just wanted to make sure i mentioned them separately octopath traveler fire emblem three houses and yeez apes these are great amazing incredible games as good as the rest in this category but i would almost say these games are for more seasoned probably adolescent to adult gamers and not so much your young children. Not because of a mature rating or anything, there's just a lot more thinking and strategy that goes into this game more than, you know, mindless Mario fun. But if your kid wants Yeez 8, <laughs> get him Yeez 8. <laughs> then we move into our expensive maybe games, Link's Awakening. Again, I think that's a must buy, but it does depend on if this is a brand new Switch for someone, I would make sure that I give them the other Zelda game, Breath of the Wild first. I give them both if they love Zelda. <laughs> Ring Fit Adventure. I love Ring Fit Adventure. I think it's great, but you kind of just don't give that to someone unless they've asked for it. It's a fitness game. It involves a lot of getting off your feet, running around, jumping, kind of like Wii Fit. If someone wants it, <laughs> then it's a great deal. But if they haven't asked for it, they might wonder why you're buying them a workout. <laughs> it's kind of like buying someone deodorant on Christmas. Like you're trying to send a message. Super Mario Party is a fantastic family game and I do recommend it. Uh, I always make sure when I recommend it though to point out you need at least four Joy-Cons if you're going to be playing with four people and buying an extra set of Joy-Cons if you don't already have one it's going to cost you like 70 bucks. Also I like to mention this isn't a good only game to have on the Switch. If you can only afford to buy one game I wouldn't go Mario Party and if you have no one to play any games with Mario Party is pretty lame. Pokemon Let's Go, they are remakes of the very first Pokemon games. They are great in my opinion. They're more casual Pokemon games. The reason why they're in maybe is because you have Sword and Shield, which are the brand new, flashy, special, awesome new Pokemon games. You want to make sure you have those first. Marvel Ultimate 3 is a lot of fun. Possibly a little too expensive in my opinion, but I would definitely buy it for a hardcore Marvel fan. 
any kid would love it. Labo kits. I still think, oh, there's one right here. I mean, I still think these things are worth it, but again, I bought this VR one and the only thing I built was the headset and the rest of it is unbuilt. And that might be how it ends up in your house too. So if you have a creative kid who really wants to dive into this, sure, it's great. Hours and hours and hours they'll be occupied. I would recommend the VR one before the other ones just because I feel like this has more replay value and there's more cool things you can do with it. Yoshi's Crafted World, it's fun, but it's really short. So if you're buying someone a Switch and this game on Christmas, they might finish the game on Christmas and then be ready for another game. So you might not get your full money's worth out of it. Mario Tennis Aces, it's not bad, but it's not the Mario game you go for first. It's a tennis game. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, yeah, it's the same thing as what I just said. And Dragon Quest Builders. I will still always recommend Dragon Quest Builders, but the second one, which I already talked about in that must buy section is so much better. And there's no reason to get the first one once you have the second second one in my opinion. Okay, we have seven more games in this section. I know it's a lot. Here's the thing though. I see these lists as just possibilities. Obviously, I don't think anyone's gonna buy every game in this must buy section. Or you're gonna mix and match it. But anyway, here's the last seven of the maybes and all of these are grouped into the same category of if they haven't played them before. Because all seven of these games either released on the Wii U, which was Nintendo's last console. So if they had that, they might've played these already. And those games are Donkey Kong, Bayonetta and Hyrule War. Warriors. And then these games, Diablo 3, Skyrim, Witcher 3, and Doom, all of those games have been on systems like your PlayStation 3s and 4s, your Xbox 360s, Xbox One. So they might already have these games, but they are fantastic games on the Switch if they don't have them already and they haven't played them before. And now for the avoids. These are the games that I, I would not recommend getting these for 60 bucks. One, two, Switch. Just don't. Mario Bros. U Deluxe. This might be a little controversial and maybe I should have put it in maybe. It doesn't make sense to me to buy Mario Bros. U at this point. Not when there's both Mario Odyssey, which is a much better Mario game, and Mario Maker 2, where you can make your own Mario levels. Kirby. It's a similar thing to Yoshi, where it's so short, but this is even shorter. It's like four to five hours long. Pokemon Tournament. It's just not worth 60. And Damon X Machina. That's another, I, I'm in trouble. <laughs> this game needs to come down in price in my opinion. And it's also a, a big risk. It's kind of a niche market of people that enjoy mech games. But when it comes to gift giving this Christmas, I just think there's better options. My, I'm sorry. Okay, that is all the very expensive games. We can take a breath. We can relax and move on to the more affordable games. Okay, the first one on my list, and honestly, it's just my number one in this category, New Super Lucky's Tale. This game just came out. It's perfect for anyone of any age, especially children. If you grew up with Spyro or Crash Bandicoot or games like that, this is a new kind of game in that style, but it's just so much fun. Hollow Knight, Moonlighter, and Dead Cells. All three of these games are kind of difficult, but I would recommend them to anyone. Just make sure when you're picking up Dead Cells, there is a game of the year edition which costs pretty much the same price and I think comes with some extra things. So yeah, look out for that one, but it doesn't really matter. Overcooked 1 and 2, the double pack. These are also great family games. Undertale, My Friend Pedro, Shovel Knight. Everybody loves Shovel Knight. You can't go wrong with that. Xenoblade 2, Torna Golden Country. Now don't be confused if you see this Xenoblade game and the other Xenoblade game, the more expensive one. I'll explain it really quick. Just Xenoblade 2, the more expensive one. That is the main base game. It's it's huge, it's expansive, it's the one that came first. Dinner Blade 2 Golden Country that is a prequel game that came after. It's much shorter, but the events in that game take place before Xenoblade 2. And Wargroove just released as well. I love it. It's a strategy game as well, so maybe not for a younger crowd. It's a lot like Fire Emblem. If you do want a game around this price for kids, uh, Minecraft is obviously always a hit. Chances are your kid already has Minecraft in some form. Then I've also made a little category here that I I've called great for old school gamers. These games are either games that are made in the style of older games, or they are remastered versions of older games, but anyone could enjoy them. Team Sonic Racing, Crash Team Racing, Spyro Trilogy, Crash Trilogy, Bloodstained, Monster Boy or Wonder Boy, and Enter the Gungeon. And then the last one is Risk of Rain 2, another game that released recently. I really love this game and think it's worth it, but you have to have online. Well, I don't know if you do have to have, but it's better if you do. Now, there is a lot in the maybes for this uh, midway price. Let me just get started. This whole section I'm about to go through, again, all of these games were released somewhere else at some point. Those games are Ghostbusters, Nino Kuni, Vampire, Dragon Ball Fighters, the South Park games, Red Faction Guerrilla, Actually, that game's really good on Switch. Call of Cthulhu, Darksiders 2, Dragon's Dogma, Dark Souls, 
anything Resident Evil, but make sure if you're buying any Switch game this holiday season and it says download code for one of the games or both of the games or whatever of the games, meaning it's not on the cartridge, you have to go onto the eShop on your Switch and download it digitally, don't get those pre-owned because chances are the person that had the game originally before you already used that code and you can't use it again. But continuing, Overwatch, Terraria, Final Fantasy games, Captain Toad, I love Captain Toad and so does Kim, but I think it, it's a select crowd that loves that game. Monster Hunter Generations, Da Blob, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The reason why that's in maybe is because Dragon Ball Fighters is just so much better. So if you're buying a Dragon Ball game for a Dragon Ball fan, I would go Dragon Ball Fighters first. Saints Row 3, Dead by Daylight, Friday 13th, and Wolfenstein 2. If you're buying specifically for a young kid, I would highly recommend Little Dragon's Cafe, My Time at Porsche, Portal Knights, any of the Lego games, Cat Quest, or Super Monkey Ball. Anyone can play them, but they're very kid friendly. Owl Boy, any of the Mega Man collections, Collection of Mana, Gunvolt Striker, A Hat in Time just released. Then My Hero 1's Justice is pretty fun if you have a My Hero Academia fan in the house. Mortal Kombat 11 is a great fighter on Switch, but it's very intense, very gory, so keep that away from young children. Blade Strangers is a fighting game that kids or anyone could play. SteamWorld Dig 2, God Eater 3, Attack on Titan 2, Fire Emblem Warriors, The World Ends With You, Coda Princess, Yonder, Sultan Sanctuary, Remy Law. That, that game's actually a lot like Diablo 3, so if you want to take a risk and surprise a Diablo fan, yeah, there you go. Or if you love Diablo. Killer Queen Black or Trine 4 could be fun to play with some friends. Crystal Crisis is a pretty good puzzle game and Rocket League is fun online. Here is what you don't buy for 30 to 40-ish dollars when you see it in the stores. Civilization 6. I love the game. It's a great game. It's just, it just doesn't work outside of a PC. I can't recommend it on Switch. Fortnite. <laughs> because Fortnite is free and when you buy it at like GameStop, the case is empty. It's a download code with some digital uh, things you can get in the game. Oh, and this goes for Tetris 99 as well. You get a couple extra modes, but just play it free. Wolfenstein Youngblood, it's just not a good game. It's very average. WWE 2K18, just don't. Payday 2, it's another online game, but it's pretty dead at this point. Hello Kitty Cruises is not a good game for anyone. I know it looks like a good young kids game, but it's not. It's just not. I would say avoid Super Dragon Ball Heroes, but it might be a maybe depending if someone's asked for it. I would say that's the only time you would buy it for them. Travis Strikes Again. Overcooked individually. I mentioned the Overcooked double pack you can buy. You can also buy them individually, but they're pretty much the same price as the double pack, so don't do that. Same goes for the Trine games. You can get the first three Trine games separately or the fourth game separately, but they're both the same price as buying all four games together in a pack. Zombieland Double Tap just came out to coincide with the movie, and it's not a very fun game. Contra Rogue Corpse is also kind of a buggy game on Switch, and Bubsy Paws on Fire. It's another game that I feel like could trick a parent into buying it, just don't. Oh, an arc. I feel like a lot of kids just like one arc on Switch. It doesn't play very well. It crashes a lot. It's just very frustrating to deal with. Okay, that was the biggest section and it was very tiring, but we're through that now and we're in the cheapy cheap section. These games are about 10 to $20 and there's not that many of them. So let's just go through them. The ones that I think are a must buy for this price. And I mean for 10 or 20 bucks, it's so easy to throw these bad boys into a Christmas stocking. I, I love these at this price. Forager is probably my biggest one in this section. Starlink is also huge. I recommended Starlink last year when it was like $60. This year, it's dropped its price all the way down to like 20 bucks, 10 bucks on Black Friday. So if you can get Starlink for around that price, apps are friggin' lootly. Sonic Mania is great for everyone. It's an old school Sonic game made recently and it's fantastic. Katamari is a remastered game from PlayStation 2, but just like a fine wine, it's only gotten better with age in my opinion. And, and just like a great movie, I could watch or play it again and again. So I'm gonna put it in must buy. Mutant Road Zero is a strategy game more for adults, but it's a great game for the price. Trials Rising, great for all ages. I think anyone could love this game. It's a fun little game with a motorbike and you do jumps and play it. 
it's just, it's really great. A little hidden gem on the Switch. Sushi Striker. Last year, I didn't recommend this one. This year, I am, because the price is finally down to what I said it should be, about 20 bucks. It'll Do 2 is a fantastic little indie game that's made in the style of Link to the Past or just the older Zeldas. Voyez, I saw is on sale for around $10 recently. It's a rhythm game. It's not going to be for everyone, but I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like Guitar Hero if you were just tapping a screen. Mario and Rabbids. I don't know what the price of this game is anymore. It bounces between 30 to 40 to on sale to $10, but if you can get it around 10 to 20, that's good. That's a that's a fantastic game. That's right up there at the top as well of this category. Also, uh, any of the Telltale games, if you can get them around this price. Like the Walking Dead Telltale games, the Batman game. Personally, I love these games. They're not for everyone. Maybe. Just let me remind you, I love all of these. And for 10, 20 bucks, you really can't even go wrong. I'm just putting them in maybe for a few reasons. First, we have the, as you've probably gotten used to, games that were released in other places and they might have played them before. They're re-releasing now years later, and that is Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered Collection. And even in a few days from now, they're releasing the Rebel Collection, which has Black Flag and Assassin's Creed Rogue. All Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games that are moving over to Switch, but they're really great on Switch. Darksiders, The Blob 2, and LA Noir. So yeah, those games, it depends, but I like them all. Then Brawlout is a great little fighter game like Smash Brothers, but I mean, if they, if Smash Brothers. Penny Punching Princess is a good little game. Soul Dam is a, it's a decent puzzle game. I'm not going to say don't buy it, but I, I don't put it first on your list. Tiny Barbarian is a really hard old school style game. Battle Chaser Night War, it's a decent RPG. It's not great, but there's a lot of hours in it for the price. Has Been Heroes is like 10 bucks. It's stupidly hard, but it could be a stocking stuffer. And the Aladdin and Lion King that just came out in time for the Disney movies. I know it might look like a good grab if you don't know what you're getting into, but it's actually the old school Super Nintendo games. It's not what it looks like it's for. It's not for kids. I mean, it could be. I mean, I, I mean, my kid better like it, but I don't think all kids would. Kids like Fortnite now. And then cheapy games that still aren't worth the price, even at $10. Sonic Forces, SNK Heroines, Shaq Fu, that one hurt me. Uh, Troll and I and any of the horse games, like My Riding Stables, My Little Champion. If you see a game on Switch with a horse on it, it's bad. Trust me, I've played them all. Don't ask me why, but I have. Okay, as always, this was extremely exhausting. I hope it helped you out in some way. And if it did, you have to smash that like button. You just gotta. And hit flip all over that subscribe button. But yeah, whether you stick around my channel or not, I do hope you have a fantastic end of the year. I want to thank everybody that stuck out this whole year with me. Obviously, I'm still making videos to the end of the year, but while I'm in this holiday season, just thank you for everything, guys. And hopefully, I'll see you in my next video, which will be right around the corner, as always, whenever, whenever I make it. All right, bye. Hope I helped.